I'm your Shula King Chris. Welcome back to my channel. Today is story time. And today I am enjoying a nice glass of Kendall Jackson Sauvignon Block wine. So that is what I'm drinking today. White wine. Tastes really good. Um, it's a little different from my Zimpadel. But the taste is really tasty. It's a little bit more stronger actually than the um, Zimpendale. This would be really good with some um, cheese crackers and bacon. Mm, sounds really good. All right, well, let's get right to it. So today is story time. Wow, so story time. What has King Chris got to tell you today? But before we go any further, come just a little closer. Look at me. Mm-hmm, I know I look good. So why not subscribe, like, Ring the bell. That's what's up. Thank you so much for joining, Royals. All right, so let's get down to it. So today is story time. Um, today we're going to be talking about um, mental illness. And I'm going to share a little bit of my insight on mental illness and my ordeal that I went through with depression. And believe it or not, depression is a form of mental illness so um my depression got so bad and it was just like a years of things just pretty much balling all up to one and then just finally coming out and i just really couldn't take it anymore so oh wow so um this occurred probably about two or three years ago now um I actually tried to commit suicide and almost was successful. Um, it just really came just a lot of being depressed and also mood swings, which come to find out later, it was some um, dealing with um, bipolar. And I got to the point where I couldn't get out the bed. I didn't want light. Like I went, um, at that time I was working nights. So I went and got like some really dark colored sheets to put into my, um, to hang up as the curtains, the really dark curtains, I'm sorry, like the blockers, the blockers, I believe that's what they're called, sheets to put up just so that I could not see the light. It was like some days where I just, I didn't want to talk to anyone, I didn't want to be around no one, I just wanted to sit in darkness. Just wanted to sit in darkness. So this went on for about a month, maybe two or so like that. And then I started fearing that, I guess that time my life was just in like a really, really chaos. And sometimes I think that's what really does it. That sometimes that really takes you into your deep depression is when you're going through the most and it just seems like you can't grasp her in order to get out of the black and bubble that you're in. And that's where I was at. Got to the point where I was just tired. I didn't want to live no more. I didn't want to do it. I couldn't. And so it got to the point where um, I got down to where I started um, hearing voices. Like, so it got kind of scary because this also shows a sign of um, schizophrenia. So I got to the point where I started hearing voices and it was just crazy. Like I went days and days where I didn't want to get out of the bed. I didn't want to be bothered. Like I even got to the point where like I wasn't even going to work some days. Like I just couldn't go to work because I couldn't get out of the bed. So I started hearing this thing in my voice telling me, like, you need to die. You need to die. You need to die. You got to die. So I've heard this voice in my head for, like I say, about a month or two or whatever. So it got so severe to the point to where I was like, okay, you know what? This is going to be the day Sunday. It's going to be the day where... I'm going to just give it up. I'm tired. And at that point in my life, it just seems like everything that I was working for and everything that I had, I could not keep a hold of it. Like everything was just slowly but truly falling apart. And I think that was the really scary part of this whole idea of this mental depression that I was going through at that time. So it got to that Sunday. Um, 
so I think like around Friday, Friday, I got to where, okay, so Sunday is going to be your day that, you know, you're going to kill yourself the day that you're going to die. So I got to the point where I believe I started like on a Friday. I got up. I totally packed up my whole entire house because at that time, my mind frame was pack up your house, get everything together, because when I die, I didn't want anyone to have to come over and do anything. Just pretty much just take my things and go on about life. Because I felt at that point, once again, that I was worthless. Like, I had nothing to live for. At that point, it seems like everything that I had worked hard for was just being taken away from me slowly but surely. So that Friday, I actually spent like all day Friday, literally packed up the whole entire apartment at that time that I was in. And so um, Saturday morning, I got up. I went to the store and I brought like all types of medication, anything PM, anything that was going to make me sleep. So I brought all that, got back home Saturday, pretty much finished like kind of like wrapping up, like packing um, in the house. So I did that. So Sunday comes, Sunday is the day, the day that that voice in my head was telling me, this is the day that you're going to do it or I'm going to do it for you. You will kill yourself today or I'm going to do it for you. And so at that point, um, I got up that Sunday morning. Like I said, Saturday, I brought all the medicine, all that like that. So Sunday, I got up and I started to take the medications. And I just started taking them slowly, 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 slowly. So probably around about six or seven o'clock that Sunday, I had consumed so many Tylenol PMs, cold medicine, anything that was PM, I had consumed it. And um, and I was a little drowsy, a little woozy. I was sleeping off and on. I would get up, I would wake up, go back to sleep, wake up and go back to sleep. So I got up and that voice in my head, once again, it was telling me, get in the closet. This is it. Get in the closet. So I got in the closet and I took the last little bit of medicine that I had. At this time, I've done took oh, like over a hundred pills. So I got into the closet and I began to get really, really sleepy. And this was around about nine o'clock at night, nine, 10 o'clock at night. And my mom decided to call and she never called that late really. So she called me and I can't really remember the conversation that we had. I just can kind of like recall the conversation from what she told me that we had at that time. So she called me and she said that she realized that there was like a slur in my voice and she kept talking to me and asking me kind of like, you know, what's going on with you? What are you doing? And apparently I told her that I'm dying or I want to die or something like that. So at this time she got um, 911 on the phone and I believe 911 told her to keep talking to me. Don't let me fall asleep. Keep talking to me. So, um, and she's in, um, she's not where I live at. She's in a different um, state or I guess town or whatever. She's about like maybe two hours away from where I'm at. So we're on the phone and I just remember her talking to me. And I I remember in that moment I was it was real peaceful and I knew that I needed to get my mom to stop talking to me in order for me to not be here anymore. And I remember her, she just kept talking and she just kept talking and she just kept talking and she even told me that um afterwards that I told her just to be quiet, like, be quiet, damn it, or something like that. She said that I said, um, and I knew that I needed her to be quiet because if she got quiet, I figured that I would go on and, you know, I would accomplish what I was trying to accomplish at that time. And so I don't really remember much about it, but I do remember it was a really good deep sleep and it felt as though I was floating and I was leaving. So um, I got to the hospital, um, and so that was Sunday. So I guess I got to the hospital a month, um, Sunday night, Monday morning, 
And I guess um, when I woke up on Monday, which I was kind of drowsy from all the medicine that I had taken um, like that. And I just remember when I um, woke up at that time, I saw my mom. That was the first time that I opened my eyes. I saw my mom and then I pretty much drift off back to sleep. Um, and the hard part about this is that when someone is really depressed and you don't know that they're depressed, it's scary because you don't really know where that person mind frame is at. But one thing that I really have to share with you is that if you are in a depression state and you get to the point where you just can't bear anymore and you are considering taking your own life, it's not worth it because it's more to it. We have to get help. And I think um, that was one of the things that I was really afraid of is just pretty much like facing it and just getting help and dealing with some of the issues that I had within myself from childhood that was deep and that was really mind bothering and pretty much got me to where I was at at that point. So I do remember when I woke up, my mom walked into the room and I remember, I don't really remember much of it. I just remember seeing her and at that time I felt safe. And it's just something about whenever you're going through a lot of things, if you're close to your mom, your father, whoever, it's just like you need them and you don't know how to express that you need someone. So I think when I saw her, I felt safe, not realizing how much that I actually hurt her. But with her love of being a mom, she put that aside to be there for me. And the funny thing about this whole idea and this whole situation, when I was going through it, I believe in prayer. And I know for one thing, if nothing else works, I know that prayer works. So the whole time that I was going through this ideal with trying to take my life, I have a friend, Miss um, Donna, and she was praying for me. And she said that around that time, that night, around one, like around 12, one o'clock or whatever, she, she just jumped up and she started calling my name and she started praying. And I say that to get to this part, when my mom, after we went through everything, my mom sat down and she talked to me and she told me that I coded that I had about three or four minutes prior to getting to the hospital and I would have basically really killed myself. I would have did it. And it just shows you that Prayer works if you believe in it. And it just shows that when you surround yourself by meaningful people in your life, you're okay. Even though your faith may not be strong, if their faith is strong, you're okay. And so um, my mom said that, that Monday when she got up and she said she wanted to rush to get to me. And she said that she couldn't rush to get to me. She was just like, something just told her, just take your time, don't rush. Take your time and don't rush. So she said she didn't understand it. So she said she got on the highway. She said she wanted to drive fast. She wanted to just get to me. She wanted to be with me, but she said she just couldn't. So she said the whole time she just drove the speed limit and she just prayed. And in the midst of her brain, when she got there, it told her that they thought that I had damaged my kidneys, which I'm sorry, my liver, which that can happen sometimes when you take a lot of different types of medications, especially Tylenol. They thought that I had damaged my liver. So they were thinking about that they were going to have to fly me to another hospital to get some help. And it just shows that in the midst of that, my mom prayed and she took her time. She did as God said, and it brought me on through. So I remember um, when 
I finally woke up. It was about two or three days later. I finally woke up and I kind of realized what was going on. I was in the hospital and I'm like, you know, what happened? What did I do? And it just shows you that depression sometimes it has that block out period where you don't remember a lot of what you do. Depression is real. Depression is a sign of mental illness that can be helped and that can be treated. So I um, got out of the hospital. I believe I stayed in there for about a week or two. I can't really remember, but I want to say it was at least like a week or two. Um, I got out of the hospital and I remember um, when I got out of the hospital, my biggest fear next was, okay, what's next? So when you try to commit su um, suicide, they want to pretty much send you to a place so that you can get some counseling, some help or whatever. So my parents agreed that someone would come stay with me, you know, keep me and that I would go to these treatment classes to get help. Um, so during that time of going through the treatment classes and getting counseling, and let me tell you, the counseling was the best thing that I did. And it really helped me and it pretty much got me back to where I'm now. I'm still a working in progress, but you know, we, we, we all are. So, um, I hated to go to these classes. We would go to these classes and there would be other people in the classes and most of the people in the class suffered from mental, some type of, um, um, suicide attempts of whatever that they had in their life. And, um, and we will learn to do different things, different coping mechanisms and things like that. And then you will have your counsel section. And I tell you, I found counseling being one of the most best things that I did. So if you are depressed and you can't get out of it and you're low, you're to the bottom, seek counseling because it works and it does help. It does help. I think that was one of the best things that I did because counseling, you sit down and you tell how you feel. There's no one sitting there judging you. They're listening to you. They're not telling you what you need to do, what you got to do. They're giving you suggestions and you pretty much move on like that. And so it, it really helped me get out of that dark place that I was in with the counseling. And we talked about, because I was still having days where I felt that I just didn't want to go, go on anymore. But the weird thing about it is that the suicide attempt was never planned. It was never something that I wanted to do. It was just the voices in my head. And I pretty much was just going with the flow doing what that voice said. And that was pretty much the really scary part of it. It's just one of those things where I don't ever want to see myself back there again. And so the counseling kind of like help you with that. And when you go, you know, she pretty much asks you how you're feeling. What is your thoughts? Did you have any thoughts of trying to kill yourself or anything like that? No, I didn't have those thoughts of wanting to die, wanting to kill myself. But sometimes I still had those doubts of that I am less than or I'm not happy with where I'm at. So this just goes to show and just tell you that we all have problems. We're not perfect. We're all going to go through trials. And we're all going to go through tribulations. But if you are suffering from depression, get help. Get help. Go through counseling. Talk it out with your counseling and you will just feel so much better and you will be where you should be still working on it like I am. And it just shows you to surround yourself with good and meaningful people, people that mean the world to you and people that love you. Even the people that you may not talk to every day, but they're still in your corner and they're still praying for you. And I just thank God for my friend, um, Miss Donna. I call her my um, flight attendant mom, Donna. I thank God so much for her because who knows if she didn't get up and she didn't, and, and God didn't send her that revelation to start praying for me, who knows where I would be now because we all know that suicide is not something that God approves of. 
So I just thank God for that. And I just thank God for having a family. And I had family members that constantly prayed for me throughout this whole idea and throughout this whole depression thing. I got my aunt that I call my second mom. She would call me and it was plenty of days where I didn't want to go to counseling. I didn't want to go to those little group sections. And she would tell me, come on, Chris, you can do it. And she would pray with me and things like that. It means the world to you when you're going through so much. And, you know, we just got to learn to just love each other and accept each other for who we are. And sometimes just embrace someone because you never know what a hug can do. You never know what a smile can do for anyone. And at that period in my life, it seems like sometimes that's all that I needed to just make me make me want to go on and make me continue. So depression is real. Get help. Get counseling. Surround yourself with people that means a lot to you and that can love you with no judgment. That's the thing about it. People that just can love you with no judgment. They can love you even sometimes to love you, to disagree with you, but love you. That means a lot. And to have a family and to have a mom to stick beside me through thick and thin. Like, my mom is like one of my best friends. Like, we have our share of problems, but you know what? She's always there when I need her. And when I needed her the most, she showed up right there beside me. And that means the most to me when you're going through something like a depression and the suicide thing. Like, wow. So that's story time for now. Thank you guys so much for joining. Queen Chris, please make sure that you subscribe, like, share, and ring the bell. Until we meet again, Royals, may God bless.